Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. So this week, uh, there was the Geneva Auto Show, mm -hmm. and lots and lots of cars and concepts were showed there. We should just cover every single one of them. Oh, no, we should not. Uh, we're going to cover some of them, um, be, but like a lot of the concepts uh, at the auto show are kind of, you know, just... It's too much. It's too much, and a lot of them aren't ever going to be real cars. They're just they're just concepts. They're just ideas. Um, yeah. So we picked four things that we think are important from the auto show, and we're going to talk about them now. Yeah. So the first one is the Rimac. 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 I really thought that I would be happy saying that word, but uh, the Rimac Concept Two hypercar. Um, and yeah, so let me just get this straight. This car, they're only going to make a hundred of them. They're going to make a hundred of them and they're each going to cost over a million dollars. Yeah. We don't even know what the exact cost will be. Right. Um, and we've seen the Rimac one, um, which was another electric hypercar, all electric hypercar, um, which, uh, Jeremy Clarkson crashed the, the oh, very first the one, one mm -hmm. ever made. That's why he doesn't like electrics probably. And so let's just get down to the brass tacks of it. The zero to 60 time of this car hypercar yes is going to rival the tesla roadster yeah 1.85 seconds they say they right. had to they had to get it under the 1.9 which is the tesla roadster. i think that's well within the margin of error but you know whatever whatever okay this car is uh made in croatia Rimac yep. is a, a croatian i like that company. about the company i like the fact that they are um they're like not in the center of electric car manufacturing like in china or in california they're just in croatia that's yeah. really cool um and this car is amazing i mean it puts out 1900 horsepower yes that's and crazy 2300 newton meters of torque which is a lot now can it go the range that the roadster can go no so it has a 120 kilowatt hour battery that should give it a mileage of around uh 403 miles or 650 kilometers that's still awesome although that's, compared to the tesla's range that uh the roadster is 620 miles right or a thousand kilometers which is of course a lot better but once you're in the 400 mile range i don't think that that's an issue not that this is going to be a daily driver for anybody because there's only going to be a hundred of them and they cost a million dollars so the the biggest question i think is why are we talking about this car because yeah. i mean yes there's all there's a suite of sensors it'll have uh you know, lane assist and stuff like that. But let's let's face it, you can also load in you can load in race tracks and it will give you lap guidance. I mean, it's it's a it's a toy. This is a big, big toy. Yeah, well, really we were expensive. We toy. were talking about this earlier. I was asking, like, if, if you have the Tesla Roadster at 200,000 or 250,000, why would you ever even why would this even be able to compete if it's over a million dollars? But you had a really good point. Because there's only a hundred of them. If you are a very wealthy, rich person who cares about your social status or whatnot, you can say, oh, but I have one. So that's so it, that's it. You just hit on it. Like they've basically, by limiting it to a hundred units, have made it desirable to the people in the world who can afford these extravagant toys. But at the same time, I feel like it's still not a negative thing. It's not a bad thing to have uh, it be so expensive and so exclusive. If you're a kid or even adults, you'll buy a poster of a car that can go really fast. Okay. You could never hope to afford it. You could, it wouldn't make sense for you to own one. Like, I mean, you, you know, people have po posters of Ferraris and Porsches and Lamborghinis. They're very sexy cars. People like to look at them. And I think that the Rimac is, the, Rim, the Rimac 2 is a, is a one of those cars. Completely unattainable. And yet something that everyone would want to look at. So if you are a car person, mm -hmm. this might be the the car that pulls you over to electrics. Oh, because you are so used to looking at, Lamborghinis. Gas, you know, yeah, Lamborghinis and, and gas engine cars um, that you're you're never looking at electric cars. You think they're so wimpy. They're so boring. This car might make you go, wow, I don't expect anyone watching this channel or us or anyone I've ever met to buy this car and that's fine. But I think that it, you know, there will be posters made of it and the idea of it, the concept of it is, is stronger than what it actually is, which is just a big expensive toy. All right, well, let's move on to another car. Uh, this one may or may not be a toy. It hasn't come out yet. This mm -hmm. is the Porsche CUV Mission E. So the, what's different about this, what's interesting about this is that uh, Porsche has already talked about the Mission E, which is a sedan. Right. This is a CUV, so this is supposed to be higher off the ground. Uh, what I've already noticed about this car, which I'm confused about, is that it is 
lower than the Model 3. It's shorter than the Model 3. And uh, yet it's supposed to be a kind of SUV. A crossover, right. right. How did they get away with that? I have no idea. Uh, so just for those of you who don't know, it should have uh, about 600 horsepower. It should do 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. It should go more than uh, 500 kilometers or 310 miles and charge at a rate of 400 kilometers in 15 minutes or 250 miles in 15 minutes. The range would probably be closer to something more like 250 to 260 miles after EPA does their testing. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have fast charging. It will have blistering fast charging of 350 kilowatts, which is excellent. Again, if you can find the, the charging spot that it, that takes... 350 and yes anything under that anything right. below I mean because that would be uh 250 miles of range added in just 15 minutes right so can I just say I'm excited about this car too uh except for a couple factors okay and I'm not crapping all over the car it looks really exciting except we don't know when it's coming out we don't know how much it's going to cost right and it doesn't seem to have any autonomous driving features I don't see any cameras and there's no, been no mention of autonomous driving at all you got to keep in mind that, that this is a Porsche a Porsche is a driver's car, and, and I think okay, that if it's, it's a driver's car, is it a drone car? Because here we see in the marketing that um, you get in your car and you go for a drive along a, a completely clear mountain road, which mm -hmm. I'm sure they clear for you if you own a Porsche, mm -hmm. um, and then you get to this nice lookout and you release your drone. Uh, yeah. Is this going to come with the car? First of all, first of all, a drone. Really? Is it just because they were seeing what was trending on Google? Right. That's what I'm to saying. To me, this is just, this is absurd. Because first of all, to get a, a drone to fly autonomously is really hard. To get the shots that the that, that it, you're seeing in the marketing material, no. No. Uh, also, no drone is going to be able to autonomously get those shots for you. And unless this, they're thinking the car is coming out in 2040 or something like that. And this drone would have to travel really fast to keep up with the car. Yeah. I mean, as of the technology as of right now, I don't think that that is possible. Getting back to reality, why? Why? What is the point of having a drone right. follow your car? Yeah, they talk all about how it's going to be able to do multiple accelerations um, and without any loss of performance, as opposed to a Tesla, which can't do multiple accelerations. Right. And I feel like you're missing the point, Porsche. Like, how many of your drivers really going to go out there and just do speed demon stuff all day long? Is that the point of a Porsche? I didn't. I thought it was supposed to be just a luxury car. I am sure that all the Porsche drivers that wanted an electric car but just couldn't bring themselves to buy a tesla will now be able to buy a porsche good for them good for you it's good that that there are porsches that are electric and again it goes back to the poster thing like what is it seinfeld he has a picture of a porsche on his wall like a, a poster porsche. for like seasons and seasons of that show because right. he was a porsche fan he right. likes porsches yeah and so i think that as soon as you show an electric porsche then at, you know as you're, if you're a child. Well, that's a good point you just brought up. Jerry Seinfeld in his Comedians uh, with Cars Drinking Coffee, I don't think he's ever driven a Tesla. Fact checkers? But check that fact. Okay. Let us know, Porsche, what this one's going to cost and when we're going to see it. Otherwise, again, right? Because there were no production targets that were mentioned. There were no, like, it's going to come out in 2021. Nothing like that. And we've heard about this car since 2015. Yeah. Will we ever see production targets for this car? Will we ever be able to buy one? Will the dynamic duo ever escape the diesel fume chambers of the diabolical Martin Wintercorn? Find out next week on another installment of In Depth. Of course, I shouldn't have done the outro then because we still have a couple more cars to talk about that's true so we have to talk about the i4 the bmw i4 and i41 can't wait for it because it looks great this concept has slipped me by i think it's been out for almost a year now this uh bmw i vision concept okay. and it looks good i mean it looks mean it mm -hmm. looks fast it looks uh Electric. Yeah, do it we is have, electric. Do we have any specs on the car? Yeah, we have some specs. Uh, it should have a 600 kilometer range. That's 373 miles. Nice. Um, probably 300 miles uh, due to EPA testing. Top speed of over 124 miles an hour. Nice. And a zero to 62 miles an hour or zero to 100 kilometers an hour in four seconds. Great. So those are great um, electric car specs. Cost? Unknown. When's it coming out? unknown so Damn. we don't know a lot why why are these car shows just called the don't know when it's coming out don't know what it's going to cost yeah it's just show. a lot of speculation it's just a lot of or not even speculations worse than that can i just talk about car shows for a second yeah yeah there's too many car shows 
Stop it with the car shows. It's Cut too back much. down. Let's have six a year. Let's just agree six. to six. Like, I want two. Okay. okay. I want one. One. I like CES. I know it's not a yep. car show, but they show all the electric cars, right. all the cars I care about. CES. And then another one right. in the middle of the year. Right. Right in July. Yeah. And mix it up. It can be Geneva one year, Tokyo another year. But like, that's I mean, it. Don't roll them out at different times. Just show me the cars. Yeah. One and then the next, you know. Don't. Because because all these manufacturers have to decide whether they're going to go to a car show, what they're going to show there. Most of them don't have anything to show. So they just show you some concepts. Right. And and sometimes they're just thrown together by like interns yeah. or uh, you know, students that they're like, right. And it's behind ropes and you can't touch it. And there's some little promo video of what it could do if it was CGI. Come on, people. It's lame. The BMW. Again, I, I want that car. Yep. That car looks cool. Mm -hmm. Um, it would compete with the model S it would compete with the model three. Um, depending on the price, who knows what the price is going to be. I hope that it's in the lower forties in the, in the, uh, uh, you're dreaming in the mid thirties. I would love a car of that. I mean, I know that it, it looks like it's going to cost eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, because I mean the i three started around forty five, so this I don't think you're going to be finding this car in that range. That's true. Let's go to the last one, and this mm -hmm. is another one that's basically lives in the computer world. It's not real. Right. Uh, this is the Renault Easy Go, but I do like it that they have a concept for a really cool idea. This is going to be a level four autonomous car by twenty twenty two. And it's going to offer ride sharing and has this really cool kind of ramp thing that opens up so that it has makes it really easy to ac uh, accessibility for wheelchairs, for people with uh, strollers. You know, that's cool. I think that this is a cool concept. At first, I didn't like the doors at all. I thought that that was really, really dumb. See, if you're in a city, mm -hmm. getting out on the side of the car, that's kind of normal. Mm -hmm. You pull up to the side, you get out of the side. I'm getting out. That's a good point. But That's then if point. I uh, suddenly it this this autonomous car, so it's not like it can wave people on or, or oh, do yeah. anything like that, pulls up and then a ramp and opens. then a ramp opens. Then the person behind you is like, yeah, now you're yeah, great. I didn't think now about. what am I going to do? Well, the other question I have about this car is what's up with the the wheel covers? Like, why? Why can't we either show the wheels to the world? Like, is this to save on drag coefficient or something? I don't know. I don't think they're going to be just, going that fast. It's just it's a, design a ride choice. sharing car. Here's my little rant. Why not? be telling us about the drag coefficient of the car? Why not be telling us about how you've made it the safest car imaginable? Why not be telling us about how great an experience it'll be because it's electric, about the quiet, about the environment? I don't hear any of these things at the car show. I just hear the same old kind of car show stuff about how fast it goes. And that's not really what I think people are interested in anymore. Right. So come on, car companies, get into the future. The future is about these new things that electric can offer to your automobiles, not the same old experience that you get with an ICE engine. Well, and I think I know why. I think it's because as soon as they acknowledge that electric is better for the environment, you know, quietness, even human health, then immediately people are going to go, oh, electrics are good for all of those things. Wait a minute. What about your gas cars? Right. And then they're going to be like, they're good too. And then people will be like, but you just said that the electrics were really clean and really efficient and really safe for, for people. Right. What about your gas cars? And then they're going to be like, well, we can't say that they're bad for you and killing you while, you know, while you're living. They're never going to come out and admit that until they make a complete switch. The only way that you can get a person to buy something like a Porsche is through marketing. Right. Through brand. There is no like... Unless the car is literally better in some respect. I mean, sure, Porsches are fast and they make sure that they, they keep them fast. But do you need to go fast in day-to-day -day driving? No. It's it's all of this sort of like masculinity. You're a man. I mean, if you look at the – I want you to look back during the, the Porsche ad where they do the drone and they go the, – the, there's the man and then there's the woman. And the woman keeps doing all these glances, these like – Right. At the man. And they keep putting those in as full frame shots. Right. It's not something that happens, you know, while other things are happening in the shots. It's just a blurry background. Right. It's a very male's face looking straight at the at mm -hmm. the presumably the guy who's driving this car like a man. You're being played. Right. Let's be real. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with feeling good driving a car fast on a dangerous cliff. You're being played, you know, your, your, your emotions are being played with. Right. 
and that's what they're going for. Right. So thank you so much for joining us on this uh, in depth. We hope you like the new microphones. We we just got these. Yeah. How does it sound? People? I hope that it sounds really good. Uh, if we get in real close, we can make it sound really good. Yeah. Podcast. <laughs> podcast style. And don't forget, we have a podcast, uh, so you can watch all of our shows as podcasts. You can listen you, to you, them. Or you can you listen to them. You can't watch them. Well, you can watch you them, but they're not very them. interesting. No, you, no, you cannot. I've watched them you before. You can't watch them. They're just, they're just very static. But you can watch you them. You can't watch them. You can only listen to them, because that's how podcasts work. If you're listening in your Tesla, uh, let us know when you get home. Log on to YouTube.com, and then search for uh, In-Depth 79, and then but you comment. To- how it sounded say hi i'm a tesla driver and i listen to the podcast and that last section sounded really good because jesse was talking right into the microphone you you can also listen in your in your car on stitcher on you can listen on stitcher uh, itunes and on um tune in and tune in this should just become a podcast i feel like we'd do the show differently hi jesse how are you well it sounds more like a radio show (laughs) you're listening to tesla time news or in depth whatever (laughs) all right bye everybody (laughs) 